creative control is to have freedom within your own self. I think everybody should have creative control. And, and creativity, I think, is not just what you do as a business or as a person or as an expression. Even the way you want to dress, it's like you have you're you free. I choose to be free. Jomi Bello, I'm a co-founder and acting creative director for Wolf, Wolfers and Cream. Um, it's a skate shop and it's a brand that we promote skateboarding, we design clothing and just a creative community and a hub that um, supports each other through our journeys. Um, it was through a friend. Uh, earlier on when we started, um, it was some, when it's something that sounded familiar but foreign to where we were. But um, because of we're bringing skateboarding, so skateboarding in itself is not is is alien to this environment. So we wanted to like name something that that will stick in your head, like bread and butter or you know like chalk and chalk and cheese. I don't know, like things like that. I mean, when I first started, it, it wasn't, it wasn't, I mean, they had early adopters. You have people who kind of like will support you regardless um, because they love what you do. Or maybe they have an idea of that's what they want to do and they're seeing it through manifest through someone else. So we had those kind of early adopters and, but family, I mean, my parents didn't really get it. I think now they get it, but I think the older generation like my parents and they didn't, they didn't understand it. So personally, I've always been a firm believer of build and they'll come. I've also been a firm believer of do what brings you joy and leave the rest to the world. So worrying about what people think or support was never my, it's still not my reference point. I'm very careful with my environment and the people around me because if, for example, in our studio, the kind of the people that work with me kind of understand what we're doing. So I, I rather, I work with people and I lean towards people who kind of understand what I'm doing. I'm not really phased, or I don't really focus on the people who don't get it. I mean, I've come from a design background. I, my dad's an architect, so growing up, everything was designed for me. So the first, the first thing for me was how do I design and how do I express myself via design? How do I solve problems via design? So that was like my background and my focus. I was a science student, I had no business in the arts, but I think it was something that was in me and I couldn't, uh, it was what really brought me joy. I loved, I still love sciences, I love, I was supposed to be a vet. But the thing is for me, I realized that what, I'm, what I want and who I am are two different people. Skateboarding came first. I think the clothing were just, was, was and is still just a vehicle to to the same way I approach skateboarding, the same way I approach clothing. It's the same, it's just an expression in a different way. People, instead of clothing, people would always buy things from abroad, you know, down to underwear. And I just found it so weird because I, took, I could see people like flexing with certain things. And I was like, why can't we have something that we are proud of that gives you the same sort of joy as any other brand abroad? And I just took it upon myself to make it my life's work to kind of like curb, not change it. I mean, it's a, these are big companies, but try and just curb it a bit. And then I just got to work. The way I consume skateboarding um, or the way we consume culture in general is visual, right? So, and culture dr drives behavior. So for me, the same videos and pictures I was seeing growing up, right? Those images kind of created my interest and formed me as a person and this kind this can be through anything. I mean, even I reckon music, art, traveling, you know, it's all visual. I know I love skate films. I love skate videos. I like documentaries. Um, I didn't even know I was telling stories, you know? I, I like, honestly, I'm only just now piecing together a lot of things and trying to make it more than what it actually is. But I just love doing what I do. You know, that's just the coco. We opened in 2016, December, but we officially opened in January. Um, that was fun. Got the store, no clothing, no nothing. I used to go pick up people to go skate um, and I'd go around, do rounds. And it was just so tedious to go around picking people, skate and then dropping everyone back. We did an exhibition. Uh, 
and that went really well. It was called friends and family because our friends, my friends and family around me were creative, and I said, okay, let's do something to support ourselves, and we'll take a commission. I mean, that commission we used to buy T-shirts and went forward like that. So the thing about it is Nigeria is, is still, I've realized we're still a very young country. As much as we are forward in music and forward as a people, we're still infrastructurally young. And in terms of our minds and our risk appetite, in terms of even just recreation and infrastructure, inf like what type of infrastructure, we are still very young. You know, where our parents were the nation builders who paved the way for us to be creative. You know what I mean? So I think it's just time. It's, it's, it's just, it's getting softer, you know, uh, because of people understand it more and there's more of a reference point. My biggest creative influence is my grandma, my brother, my older brother, um, uh, my friends. And my, like my grandma, I think she was attitude towards life, you know, um, family, enjoyment, um, hard work, risk taking, visionaire. And my brother, my brother was the first person I saw being creative. Well, I had a reference point, my dad, but my, but my brother. Um, and I mean, that influenced me. My friends, because they, uh, they support me, my family. Uh, Lagos, to be honest, I, I find it hard to create outside Lagos. I struggle with that because I think the reality of Lagos sparks something, like some sort of necessity. We'd go to Lagos Island, uh, we'd go to Zenit Bank, we'd just go to, we just find spots, man. We'll find spots. And I was happy because my age group, I didn't have anybody who was skating. Like, that's not something for my age group. But I loved it so much, and it was these kids that were doing it. So I was like, okay, cool, let's, let's go. I enjoy what you enjoy, you enjoy what I enjoy, let's do it. My favorite collabs, Pata. I did a collaboration with Pata, it's an Amsterdam base brand is really really cool because uh, they're one of my idols they were one of my idols growing up and now we're friends so that was very uh that hit me hard when i did that collaboration that was really it was a personal one that was really good a few but i can't mention because it would just ruin the surprise and it wouldn't be it wouldn't be as not not because it's a secret or a drop but i just feel like because things are so accessible now in life, information and everything. I think it's nice to be excited about stuff again. So the reason why I like Pith in general, I call them Pith, not even Pith, I call them Pith. I was a fan of them before. With Pith, they, that side of me or that side of the brand um, aligns with them. And on top of that, they are resourceful. They are, they, I love their design language. And yeah, I think that's, I think that's what spark my interest or the synergy i don't know man it's fun like challenges is, is always fun to me i like i like a good challenge you know so i don't know what the biggest challenge is hiring people finding the right people i think that's the biggest challenge i don't like that challenge i mean what really pushes my creativity is everyday people man just looking at people talking to people um, paying attention to my environment. There's an idea of not being free. Like everything is freedom, freedom, especially for Africa, freedom, freedom, freedom. Um, and I know it's tough being a black man in this world, but I choose to be free. I choose to ignore the fact that I have constraints based on certain environments, places, opportunities. I choose to be free. If that makes sense, I can do what I can. If I set my mind to it, I can be anything. I firmly believe that. I like to promote that and tell people that it's possible. Anything is possible. But for me, success is success is is people around me happy. I think I think success is not a bank. It's not. It's not. It's not money. It's not material things. It's not assets. I think success is that. The people around me, the people I care about, are are happy. Growing up, the options are limited. In sports, they're limited. In expression, they're limited. 
in career, then limited. Well, growing up, I just want to be, I think what was that thing just, I want to be an institution that promotes skateboarding. I really want to be in the educational system. I really want, just like uh, people would have in school, football, table tennis, some schools have basketball, you know, hockey sometimes if you're lucky. Why can't skateboarding be part of the curriculum? That's my own legacy as a, as a, from a skate point of view. The first logo, oh, actually the first logo, I didn't like it. I struggled design-wise to work with it. And so I was trying to create a logo that appealed to um, all people in different social classes or economic classes in life. It was, I was really thinking deep. The waffles was made, it was patented, a waffle machine was patented in 1869. 1869, that's what they would have worn. If they had come to Africa, that's what we'd have seen. And also I put buttons in his eye because he was a dead colonial guy in Africa. So that's how I came up with the old logo. Hi, this is Jomi. You're watching Creative Control by Days and Nights.